James, uh, a sort of unusual ending to, to a football match there for, for you personally. Um, I don't know if you want to start off with a message of, you know, you've now retired as a, a footballer. Um, firstly, how does it feel? It feels all right, to be honest with you. Um, I've been ready probably for the last three or four months. Um, you know, we struggled with injuries a little bit this season and, um, you know, most importantly, my kids are growing up now. They're, they're getting doing activities and stuff on the weekend and you know I just want to invest my time a bit more in them. Um, you know, I've been playing men's football since I was sixteen. So, you know, I've had best part of twenty years of career in, you know, whether it's non league and obviously the football league. So yeah, it's eventually taken its toll, but it's definitely the right decision and um, I'm looking forward to having much needed time off on the weekends and stuff and um, spending time with family. A lot of ex-professionals say there's a, there's a certain moment when you know it's it's done. Um, when when did you feel that moment? Um, I did my knee probably two months ago. Um, I knew I was going to be a bit part player this year, um, but it was more to the point when I was struggling to walk on a weekend, and you know, especially the Sundays when we always had spent time as a family, um, took the kids out or whatever, and you know, I was hobbling around, and I thought, you know, it's not really worth it. Um, you know, I want to. First and foremost, think about my health for after football because you know you want to see your kids grow up. You want to be able to do things with your kids, and um, you know that was you know it's definitely the right moment for me. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a nice fit in to end the game. Obviously, most importantly with a win, um, a clean sheet, and then uh, to get on at the end was yeah t topped it off really. When, when preparing to, to come on for them final minutes in, in stoppage time, was it a different feeling knowing that this is going to be the last time you touch the surface? It's hard to say really because once you step over the white line, I think you just focused. And uh, to be honest, I were, you know, G had it in the corner. I was thinking just cross it in. You know, I want a chance, but obviously, you've got to think about the team. Uh, you know, we won nil up um, against a very good side, and you know, we just did the right thing seeing the game out. But yeah, it was a touch of uh, class from the manager, who's been absolutely brilliant with me since I've come in. So I can't thank him enough for bringing me on the pitch today. How will you uh, reflect on on a fantastic career? Um, proud moments, a lot of proud moments. Um, obviously, ups and downs, which you are going to get it over a 13, 14 year, uh, year career. Um, so I just want to like take time out to thank each and every club I've played for, um, and all the players and the staff that you know I've come across. Um, obviously, a special mention to Bradford. They, you know, they they was part of my life for nine years. Um, I had some great moments with them. Um, not too many bad moments, so you know, a special moment to them and uh, the fans there at Bradford. I know a lot of the, the Bantam fans will be, be watching and I think they've been fans ever since you were scoring in West Yorkshire against Osset. Um, thinking about your time there, from being plucked out of, of the co-op, uh, as the famous song is, uh, how was, did you ever think you'd go on to do what you did in football? Um, no, to be honest with you, um, obviously the things that happened at Bradford will probably never happen again. You know, you, you're talking about a, a League Two side getting to a League Cup final. Um, so and you know playing away at Chelsea in the FA Cup fifth round or whatever it was fourth round, uh, winning there when they was the champions. So there's a lot of good things that have happened at Bradford, um, which I was thankful to be a part of. Um, but yeah, it's um, it, it, you know I'm special men like I said, a special mention to Bradford who have been absolutely brilliant with me um, from day one since I went in. Just keep reflecting on your uh, on your career. Uh, we've got to mention that moment at Aston Villa, the the Hanson coming in. Um, just talk about that moment and that sort of run that you had with Bradford and, and getting to the League Cup final. And as you say, like a true underdog story. Yeah, obviously um, we did have a little bit of luck at the start of the rounds. You know, we had moments where people were missing open nets and stuff like that. Um, but we earned that luck, um, and obviously to go away at Villa, you know. In the first half, we was under pressure a lot. Um, Duke made five or six brilliant saves, and we defended well as a team. But um, we always knew that we'd cause problems from set players, which we did in the first leg. So, you know, once uh, Gary Jones put it in, he always not more often not puts it on the money. And um, you know, I, I saw the flight of the ball, and um, yeah, it was a it was a good header. Uh, Shea Given, I think, was in net. He had no chance, and that gave us a platform then to see the game out. And um, yeah, it was a. Brilliant moment. It still gets played now every year, which is uh, brilliant. And as my kids grow up, uh, my eldest obviously knows about it. But once my youngest starts realising football and stuff, then she'll no doubt see it as well. I'm sure you'll have it on the telly over and over on a loop. And um, moving forward as well, that sort of set up Bradford for a couple of years as well. Promotion, um, the FA Cup run, as you've mentioned, uh, the win at Chelsea. Um, I suppose that's probably the most poignant uh, period in your career, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'd say that's when I was top of my game. To be honest with you, 
um, at Bradford. Um, I was playing every game. I played 45 games a season, fit, playing 90 minutes. You know, no problem. I could have played Saturday, Monday, Wednesday. Could have played three games in a week. Um, so that was definitely my best spell of my career. Um, you know, which obviously I've got to thank my old manager Phil Parkinson because you know he managed me for five, six years. Um, he definitely got the best out of me. Um, so special mention to him. But yeah, other than that, then it, you know injuries did naturally take apart. Um, it, it's part of football. You know, I can't live in regrets. Like I said, I've been lucky enough to have good moments in my career, and obviously a few downs with relegations um, at Bury and Grimsby, which obviously it, it's not ideal. It, you know, it still hurts from this day. But um, you know, on the whole, I, I have had a successful career. And what a way to end it here at the, the Windsor Food Service Stadium. Uh, a promotion, an NPL record, being part of a side that got this club to the, the first round of the FA Cup for the first time in, in 22 years. Um, how will you reflect on your time with us? No, I've absolutely loved it. Um, like I've said to the lads in there, um, you know, I laugh and joke. We all do, you know, me and Greeny about his uh, careers. You know, we only have bits of banter with the lads, but I generally mean that winning the league last year and uh, the spell I've had up, you know, 12 to 18 months with the boys, it's right up there with one of my best moments in my career. So, you know, I thank them and, uh, you know, I probably couldn't wish to retire in front of a better dressing room and better staff around me. So, yeah. And obviously we've got an iconic moment we want to delve into, that, that goal at Osset to, to win the game, an absolute screamer as well. Just talk us through what you can remember from that day. Um, coming off the bench again, you know, last season it was a case of I'd start a game, miss a couple, but he'd only bring me on if needs be, which you know, suited me perfectly last year. Um, and obviously I remember struggling away at Ossip, you know, it was a horrible day, um, a bobbly pitch and they, you know, they did play really well that day and made it very difficult for us and, you know, forced us to make two or three changes last 15 minutes chasing the game. And I remember uh, Jay scoring, or I think it was Jay setting it up or scored the equaliser and um, he then headed one back across and I just think thought of that instincts and just connecting with it really and um, as soon as I hit it I thought if, if it's on target it's in and thankfully it flew in the top corner. And uh, ending it on a win that's always better isn't it? Absolutely like I said you see there um, the most important thing was seeing the game out today because you know like I said to the gaffer and all the players in there that I do want to come back bits and part of this season you know I'll definitely come away at Rafa Park Avenue and guys but Ultimately, I want to be up on that balcony last game of the season, watching them lift, whether it's the championship or the playoffs, which I fully believe they can do. What's next then for Big Jim Hansen? Um, spend some time with my family, to be honest with you. Um, just reflect on my career um, and just delve into the HGV. That's you know that's what I've been looking to do for the last year. Um, so my focus is going to be going into that and enjoying my weekends off and. Like I say, spending it with my kids. Um, my eldest now playing for a football team, so she's she'll want me all the time there, which you know she deserves it because you know I say I've lived away as well at Wimbledon for a year, so she deserves my time as well as me as youngest. Well, on behalf of everyone at, at Works Up Town Football Club, thank you for your efforts over the past uh, 18, 19 months. But more importantly, I'm sure everyone on behalf of the footballing world will say thank you. Thank you. Cheers.